happens with operating system these days is even even in some cases uh, without machine copies uh, they'll be willing to pay for somebody to pre-install their operating system uh, based on like maybe they pre-install something like an antivirus software or something uh, so negative pricing too uh, this is where it even gets more complicated where you have to actually pay someone to be able to compete in the market you don't have to charge you don't have to give it free you have to be able to kind of bribe your way into the market and I think if you look at anything that's abundant and everything that's copyable, uh, it, it's going to be extremely hard to persuade people to pay when they can get the same thing for free. And especially in the beginning yeah. of these days, people can just Google for the answer. This is one of the, the, the talk that I watched yesterday from Professor Lester. Well, I think one thing, that's one, the one thing that where my perspective has changed is on the non-commercial clause in the Creative Commons license. Um, um, I used to be of the view that you should allow people to sell your music commercially um and uh, you know, i think you know you should allow people to use your music co commercially without your permission and and the first album had that you know you can take denied by rain and you can do what you want with it uh, and sell it commercially and, and not give a penny to us um and upon discovering these different perspectives my view has changed on that i think that while um, it's it is admittedly a reduction of freedom from the perspective of the user uh, of the listener i think it is important i think it's useful and viable for the band or the artist to actually have the non-commercial clause in there so um if commercial use is requested that the band can strike up um an agreement with the with the person to you know to figure out a fair an appropriate means of compensation now again it's a reduction of freedom from the perspective of the listener but I think it's also important to allow the artist to continue to, prov to provide free content. And that's where I've changed a little bit. It's like at first I was uncomfortable about making that decision, but now I feel like that's the best thing forward. Well, just a very uh, quick couple of questions now that require just a very short answer. Um, hmm. If you could have one person from any band, any, any instruments on stage with you, who would it be? Oh, wow. Um, if it could be anyone, it would be Nico McBrain, the drummer from Iron Maiden. So I, I mean, you know, you know, like you see these Justin Bieber fans, and they go all crazy, uh, and they have big cardboard like signs with love hearts written on them. Um, I'm kind of like that about Nico McBrain. I'm just such a tremendous fan of his. <laughs> so, <laughs> love, Fair enough. I love, I love no, and that's not a friend to a new drummer. <laughs> you know, just and cutting out the easy option of Iron Maiden, um, one. The, your favourite heavy metal or death metal track of all time, cutting out Iron Maiden. Well, favourite song of all time. Um, ooh, oh, oh, that is tough. Uh, let me think. I think if I was to cut out Iron Maiden specifically, um, I think my favourite track of all time. It's probably going to be uh, Five Magics by Megadeth off Rusty Peace. Um, Interesting choice. I think that would probably be it. It's, to me, it's just the just the epitome of, of Crash. Um, if I did have Iron Maiden, it'd be Ryan Lee and Jim Mariner. That's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> well, without, without boring everybody else listening to it, my, if I was to choose Megadeth, I think Hangar 18 uh, would be my track. track of what a song. What a yes. song. Yeah, yeah. So. Anything <laughs> off that album. Anything off that album, though. And I'll tell you what, Tim, you should, I don't know if you've read it yet, but you should read Dave Mustaine's biography. No, it's, I haven't read it. <laughs> oh, it's just mind-blowing. Um, it's, it's a fascinating read. I, I, I was on vacation recently for a week, and I was reading it there. It was absolutely unreal. And the final question, which is hopefully the most difficult, um, I want you to cast your mind back to a young John O'Bacon of 15, 16 years old who's just about to sit his GCSEs or just sat them. What did you imagine you would be doing? When you were, when you were left school and you'd sort of made your, got your qualifications, what was your, um, aspirations? What did you think you'd be doing this time when you well, were 16? When, when I was 15 or 16, I was, I was actually going through a really pretty intense period of, um, uncertainty on exactly that topic. Um, the reason why is because, um, between the ages of about 12 and, um, 16 or 17, I'd been just, I was such a geek. I mean, I was just really into technology and, um, I was reading books about C++ programming and 
because I read I read in an article in uh, in Sega Format magazine that uh, that video games were written in C, um, and then I heard that C plus plus is a better version of C. So I went to the library and started learning C and C plus uh, plus. I went to night school actually in Bedford College in um, when I was thirteen, fourteen uh, to learn C, um, and I wanted to be a games programmer, um, and uh, um, um, but then I you know when I was about sixteen I really got into metal and I really started wanting to play in a band and and I had to make a decision about whether I wanted to be a metal person and a, you know a musician or whether I wanted to be in technology and I felt like the two were mutually uh, incompatible um, and I'll never forget being um, my mum and dad's computer was downstairs in in, in the little office room and my upstairs in my bedroom was my guitars um, and I used to literally spend 30 seconds on the guitar and then I was uh, oh, I should be I should be not wasting my time on this. I should be spending my time on my computer. I go down and spend 30 minutes in there, and then I'd be running back up and then up and down, up and up and down. And I never knew. Um, and what made life more difficult was when I came to the realization that I suck at programming. Um, so I was like, I had, I had absolutely no idea. Uh, it was an incredibly worrying time going to university and getting towards the end of university. And being, what the hell am I going to do? Like, it didn't feel like I had any natural career choice. I'm just glad that this whole community thing worked out. <laughs> well, it, it seems you've got the best of both worlds in the end. So, uh, well, that's yes. why I'm happy about seven fifth. Is that you know I get to I get to geek out, but I get to rock out. So, <laughs> well, Roy, if if you've got nothing else to put to Jono, um, I'm going to close the uh, interview off. And we've so we're going to uh, yeah, we're going to close with one, one of the uh, tracks from the latest album. We have to decide which one. I suppose yes. we're well. This is going to be pieced onto um, onto the show that we record later in the week, so I hope uh, Jono doesn't mind doesn't get an instant release. Um, no, I'd just, I'd just like to say thank you so much, Jono, for coming on. It's it's greatly appreciated. I know you're very busy, and uh, to spend your time to, to to dedicate to us for for the good few hours that you spend talking to us is uh, greatly appreciated. Um, to everybody else, I just will say. Check out Ubuntu, check out the latest version, see what you think. I mean, I've certainly been deploying it for a long time now to new users and to uh, established people alike, and I've certainly been very happy. I certainly wouldn't put my name to any other distro with confidence. Uh, certainly when you're giving it to a new user, if you give them something that doesn't work, it comes back on, on my name and uh, looks bad on me. So um, I strongly recommend, if you're thinking about a move from Windows or any other operating system, have a little look at Ubuntu, see what it has to offer. You'll find uh, Jono very friendly, I'm sure, and, uh, in the Ubuntu community. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, as well, check out his music. And uh, thank you very much, Jono. Um, no, I really, I, yeah, I really appreciate it. And thanks, guys, for inviting me on. And, uh, you know, keep up the great work uh, as the free software century. <laughs> and uh, and uh, all the best with the, with the future success of the, of, of the podcast as well. Thanks very much, Jono. All right. Thank you. Okay, so it's the end of the show, and uh, to play us out, I'm going to choose a, a track by uh, by Jono's band, uh, Severed Fifth, and it's going to be from the album Nightmares by Design. Um, the track is one of my favourites of that album, and it's called End of Days. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>